Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are creating this stories design using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So here we can see we have all these stories displayed over here and if I click on any of these stories, we have the story displayed over here in full screen mode and we can also click on the next and the previous buttons over here and then we can click on this close button. Now in the previous video, we generated these stories uh, dynamically using JavaScript. So if you go to our current design, this is how it looks right now. So if you go to the source code, we can see that we have all these uh, stories over here inside this all stories array and all these images are displayed over here. Now in this video, we will add the functionality of displaying the stories in full screen mode. So let's get started. <laughs> Right, so here I'm in the JavaScript and let's scroll down over here and uh, this is the all stories for each loop and now let's go ahead and add an event listener to this content. So here we'll just type content dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here and the first thing we need to do is display the story full division. So if you go back to the index.html file here we can see that we have this division with the class of story full and if you go to the style.css file and if you scroll down here we can see for the story full class we have set the opacity to zero for now so what we will do is when we click on the story we will set the opacity back to one and also the pointer events to auto and we'll also have a smooth transition so let's type transition and uh, let's set it to all 100 milliseconds is and uh, let's go ahead and create story full dot active and here we'll set the opacity to 1 and pointer events to auto right now when we click on this content which is uh, this story right here so in the html file here we can see we have this division with the class of content and in that we have the image so when we click on the content we want to set the active class to the story full division so first of all, let's reference the story full division over here in the JavaScript. So here I'll just type const story full equals document dot query selector story full. And uh, now let's go ahead and type story full dot class list dot add. And we will add the active class. And the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to set the image source. So Right now we can see that we have hard coded this uh, image URL over here. Now we have to set the image to the current image of the story. So let's go ahead and access this image in our JavaScript. So here I'll just type const and I'll just give it a name of story full image equals document dot query selector. And here I'll just type story full IMG. So this will target the image inside the story full division. Right now let's go ahead and set the source of this image. So here I'll just type story full image dot set attribute and we'll set the src attribute to the current image. So the current story is uh, referred to as s over here in this for each loop. So let's type s dot image URL. This is the URL of the full image. The next thing we need to do is add the title. So if you go back to the index.html file, here we can see we have this division with the class of title and in that we have this uh, text over here. Now we need to replace this test title with the current title of the story. So let's access this title. Let's go over here to JavaScript and let's create a constant. Let's type const and let's name it story full title equals document.query selector story full title right now let's scroll down and uh, here we will first of all check whether we have the title for this uh, story so let's add an if condition and uh, let's type exclamation s dot title so this if condition will check whether we have a title inside the current story so here we can see we have this title keyword over here so it will check whether we have the title so this is for the condition where the title is not available so if you don't have the title, then we will set the display to none. So let's type story full title dot style dot display and let's set it to none. 
and if we have the title then uh, we will add the code inside the else so here first of all let's set the display back to block so let's type story full title dot style dot display equals block and let's set the text of the title to the current title so let's type story full title dot inner html equals and let's set it to the current story which is s dot title right now let's save this and let's go back to our browser and let's click on one of these stories and we can see that the story is displayed over here in full screen mode and we also have the title title number one let's refresh this page and let's select another story let's select uh, this story right here and now we can see that this story is displayed over here in full screen mode and we also have the current title right now let's add an event listener to this close button so when we click on this close button we want to hide this full screen mode so first of all let's uh, reference that over here in the javascript if you go back to the index.html file let's see what is the class for the close button so we have a division with the class of close btn so let's access that over here here we just type const close btn equals document dot query selector storyful close btn and let's add an event listener so let's type close btn dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here now when we click on the close button we want to hide the full screen mode so for that we have to remove the active class from the storyful division so let's type story full dot class list dot remove and let's type active over here right now let's go back and let's open the story and let's click on the close button and we can see that the story is being closed so the close button is working all right we'll also set the cursor to pointer when we hover over these stories so let's go back to the style.css file and uh, let's go to the content and uh, here for the content let's set the cursor to pointer and now when you hover over this we have the pointer right now the next thing we will do is so we will add the functionality for the next and the previous arrows over here so let's go back to our javascript now the first thing we need to do is we need to track the index of the current story so for example if i click on this uh, third image right here we can see that we have the third story displayed over here in full screen mode now when we click on the next button we need to display the fourth image so for that we need to have an idea of which image is currently displayed over here so let's go back and uh, what we will do is uh, when we click on the content division we'll also store the current index inside a variable so let's create a variable over here and uh, let's name it current index and by default let's set it to zero now let's go inside this for each loop and uh, when we click on the content division let's go ahead and update this current index variable so let's type current index equals and we need to get the index of the current story so for that we need to add one more variable over here so this one is for the story and we'll add a comma and uh, we'll just name it i so this will be the story and this will be the index so let's set the current index to i so now this variable will have the current index stored over here now let's go ahead and add the functionality of the next and the previous buttons so if you go back to the index.html file here we can see we have this division of the class of left arrow and we also have a division with the class of right arrow let's reference them inside the javascript so let's create a constant let's name it left arrow equals document dot query selector story full left arrow and let's tap const right arrow equals document dot query selector story full right arrow right now let's add event listeners to these two constants so here just tap left arrow dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here now here the first thing we need to do is add an if condition to check whether we are on the first index so if you are on the first index for example if you are here in the first story and now if you click on this previous button we don't want anything to happen so let's add an if condition and uh, let's see whether the current index is the first one so let's tap current index is greater than zero 
then the first thing we will do is set the current index to one less than the current index so let's tap minus equals one so for example if the current index is four it will set it to three right now the next thing we need to do is we need to set the image source and the title so we can just copy these lines of code from here and let's paste it over here and let's make some changes so here for the src let's set the image url of the current index so let's delete this and uh, let's type all stories which is the name of the array and for the index value let's type current index and here we'll just type dot image url and here instead of s title we need to type all stories and for the index let's type current index dot title and even here we need to set it to all stories and current index dot title right now let's see whether this works so let's go back and let's click on one of these stories and let's click on the previous button and we have the previous image and the title displayed over here let's click on the previous button once more and we have the first image and title displayed over here and now if we click on this previous button we don't have anything happening over here let's take a look at the console and let's see whether we have any errors and we don't have any errors over here so everything is working all right all right now let's add the functionality of the next button so it is pretty much the same as the previous button so I'll just copy this uh, code from here and let's paste it down here and I'll just change left arrow to right arrow and let's change minus equals to plus equals and here for the if condition we need to check whether this is the last story so let's type less than all stories which is the name of the array dot length minus one because arrays start with zero All right now let's go back to the browser and let's see whether it works so let's click on one of these stories and let's click on the next button and we have everything working all right let's click on the previous button and it is also working all right so that's basically it with the next and the previous buttons now in the next video i'll show you how to add the timer so that after a set amount of time it will move on to the next story so we will do that in the next video so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day